Hi, my name is Rhonda Spellman. I'm the author of The Journey, Home from Autism. When my son first digressed into an autistic world that I didn't understand, all that I could find about autism seemed negative. I really had a hard time finding anything that was positive, and yet the more I worked with my son, the more I realized that there's a lot of really wonderful, really magical, positive things. From my book, I have a chapter titled, What Does Autism Really Look Like? Full descriptions on all of the wonderful things, but yet it wasn't enough to be able to share with people, so I created a very small bookmark. In this bookmark, I have What Does Autism Really Look Like? And I begin with Honest by Nature. It's just not logical to lie. People with autism very seldom embellish the truth. That's just not the way they think. Another thing that I thought was pretty cool is egos are not worn on their sleeves. If it's functional, it's good for them. And if you're trying to impress them, forget it. Impressing them is just really not going to be your motivation in life because they're just not really impressed by fame and fortune. By the way, these bookmarks are one for $3.50 or three for $10. And on the back, I included one of our very favorite recipes. I created a, an all-purpose all flatbread, good for everything from sandwiches to tortillas to pancakes, very slight adjustments. Again, this comes from my book, The Journey Home from Autism. What I've also decided to do is I asked some really wonderful people, some professionals you've probably heard of, Karen Simmons, the founder and CEO of Autism Today, Dr. Lawrence Becker, and many others who I value their opinion. I asked them, what does autism look like to you? And I'd like to share their comments with you. And as always, I welcome your feedback. I welcome your questions. P please visit me at autismwithrhonda.com. Thank you so much. That's a great question, Rhonda. I just love your new book, The Journey Home from Autism. And now I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey. I remember the first time I heard those words, I'm afraid your child has autism and there's no cure. I was sitting in the Safeway parking lot when I got that call, and I cried my eyes out. The doctor continued to tell me what autism was and that it was a terrible affliction, and they didn't know that much about it. When I asked what his life might look like, the doctor said, you don't want to know. But I did want to know. I didn't know what to do or even who to call besides my husband. At that point, I made the decision to accept the fact that he had this condition and that I would do whatever it took to guide his life towards success. This is when I began my relentless quest for knowledge, which has not stopped to this day. I didn't want other parents to be spending their time learning about autism while also attending to their children, so I wrote my first book, Little Rain Man, to help everyone understand, even his teachers and his peers. It was written when and if I had time on the bathroom floor while everyone else was sleeping. In the beginning, autism meant lack of eye contact, spinning in circles, and screaming tantrums for no apparent reason. It was a common acronym for autism, always unique, totally intriguing, sometimes mysterious. Now it's so much more. Our children on the spectrum have so many possibilities when they have the right and best interventions. Regardless of where they fall on the path, we can follow their intense focus, which may manifest into their many gifts, strengths, and talents. As Temple Grandin says, we need to get these kids turned on, take notice of what they fixate on. If they can't get their mind off of horses, then center their lessons around horses. The hopes and possibilities for parents around autism are so much better than they were 20 years ago. There's so much in the way of treatment options, support groups, and information nowadays, and yet we still need to understand what will happen with our children's futures, which is why my new book, Autism Tomorrow, will be released this year. Today, the autism acronym has changed for me. It means awesome, unique, totally intriguing, special, and magnificent. Who knows, your child may be the next Mozart of the world, and Autism Today will do whatever it takes to help you through your journey. Hi, this is Judith Bryles, and I'm known as the Book Shepherd to many, and I had the pleasure of helping to uh, 
structure and do editing on Rhonda's wonderful book, The Journey Home from Autism. And here's what autism looks like to me. First of all, I didn't know a lot about it before I started working on Rhonda's book. And secondly, what I came away with that it can be absolutely debilitating, not only to the child, but to the family and the community because it's a loss of what a child thought they were was going to be and there is now restrictions on it. One of the great things that's happened with Rhonda's book is that with her her relentless energy and drive to discover what works and what doesn't work, she's really come up with a series of techniques that's moved her son Tanner from being almost unable to communicate with family certainly friends in school, to being totally integrated with society. And his family loves him. The school loves him. He's got a huge variety of friends. And if you saw Tanner today, you wouldn't know that he was so afflicted just a few years ago with her care, with her drive, with her model, and with the phenomenal recipes and the whole nutritional program she put Tanner on. He's a new kid, and that's wonderful. Good morning. This is Dr. Lawrence Becker. I want to talk to you about my experience with autism. And so in 1976, I traveled from rural Maine to San Antonio, Texas, and saw a 10-minute film that changed my life. That film was about a young man named Richard Varvro from Edinburgh, Scotland. And the man that brought it said he had a 30 IQ in the mind of a 6-year-old. But his art fascinated me. I contacted the parents, and the long story short, when I met him in 1978 in Scotland, I became convinced that he was, in fact, a savant, an autistic savant. And the irony of that is I had never heard the word autism until one month before I went over to meet Richard in Scotland. I have been very involved with, with uh, one element of autism, uh, and that's the extreme savant, autistic savant artist. My journey in autism began, really, in 1978. And since then, I have worked with four of the world's great autistic savant artists. I was interested in working with the gifted, and I didn't know that I would end up spending 35 years of my life working with the handicapped gifted. But that's where I've been, uh, and so it led to producing an international award-winning documentary film with eyes wide open about this artist from Scotland. I'm sort of a, a conduit. I say I'm an aqueduct, and I'm not the water and I'm not the source of the water, but I've been gifted with an amazing, for me in still, ability to con make connections and send this information that comes into me and flow it out to other people. And one of those real joys has been connecting with Rhonda Spellman because this is someone that I've just gotten to know, and, and she is a wealth of information. And I've been writing, uh, as has Rhonda, for the last year, a article each month for the Autism at Home series. But I've had the wonderful experience over the last 35 years of intimately knowing one of the great autistic savant artists in the world. I have traveled really literally thousands and thousands of miles with him and his father, setting up exhibitions all over this country. So I do have many resources to um, share with people about people who have had those experiences. So I welcome your, your comments, questions, and and uh, look forward to, to contacting you. Thank you very much. Have a great day. My name is Virgie Fong. I'm Rhonda's mother and Tanner's grandma. When Rhonda told me that Tanner had been diagnosed with Asperger's, a form of autism, we were all devastated. The word autism is scary. So now what? This brilliant, darling little boy is who he is because of my daughter's relentless research and determination to understand Asperger's and to give Tanner the tools to be the very best that he can be. Autism doesn't scare me anymore. We have all benefited from understanding autism better and have been more accepting to each other. Being a part of my grandson's life and I enjoy watching him grow mentally, he astounds us all. <laughs>